So hello and welcome to this video. So a question I often get is, what is the difference between collections and arrays in Excel VBA? So in this video, we're going to look at the differences between them and compare them in different situations. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to compare reading data from a worksheet to both the collection and to the array and see what the difference is. I've got some sample data that you can see here, just has first name, surname, country and items bought. So let's have a look at the code. So we do Alt F11 as normal to get into the code window. You can see some code I've already written to read the, to the collection. So we step through the code one line at a time. We basically use current region to get us all the data. I've said it before, if you press control asterisk while you're on any spreadsheet, it will get all the data that's adjacent. And this is called the current region. So when we've nice, nicely kind of formed data here, we basically use current region and it brings all the data back. And then once we have the data back, we basically read through each line and we add the value. Now this is the one drawback of the collection over the array. The problem is with the collection that we can only add one item. So if we want to add, say, the first name, surname, country, and item bought, it's not possible. So to do that, we need to use a class module or we need to, do, we need to store lots of arrays or collections within the collection. So we keep reading. And let's look at the watch window just to see what we have. And you can see we've got the first item is country. And let's continue reading. Second item is Colombia. The next item is Greece and the next item is Austria. So you can see how we read the data using the collection. Now let's compare that to reading the data using an array. So we can copy this again. So we have basically the same starting code here that gets us the data, but actually what we need to do is we just need to declare a variable, call it a variant, and then we basically assign this to this range. Now I could assign it to range.value, but it, there's no point in having the range variable here because we're not going to use it again. And just like that, we can pop everything into the array. We don't need a loop and we don't need to dimension the array. So let's test out this code. Not much testing as it's just one line. So we step over the line and then we drop the array into our watch window and have a look and it's full. Now let's look at each part. We look at array and let me just drag the watch window across so we can see it just, and you can see that the values that we have, we've got first name, surname, country and items bought. So that's the header. The second place we've got Lynn Garcia, Columbia 16. The next we've got Aki Myers, Greece 32 and so on. And you can see how powerful that using the array is. Now, the other thing we can do with the array is that if we want to write the values back to the worksheet, we can do so in the same way. We basically just get the arrange. And in this case, our range is going to be, let's make it F. So we'll do range and we'll say F1. That will go to I and I101. And we just say the value like this and the value equals array. So let's move across here and see exactly what happens. We run the code and you can see it copied everything out. And you can see that's super fast as well. Copied everything into the array, then copy everything from the array back to the worksheet. So you can see when it comes to reading all the data from a worksheet that the array is much better than the collection. So now we're going to look at the second difference between the collection and the array. Now the big difference this time is that we're just going to read selected records. So we're only going to read records where the country is United States. So let's just have a quick look at that filtered data. And you can see that there's four records. So we're going to read the first name of Abbott, Miriam, Heedy, and Griffin. So how do we do this? Well, let's have a look at the code. You can see the code that we have before, and this is how a collection reads from the worksheet. So nothing too complicated there. But the only thing we have to change here is we have to say if 
the value in column 3 equals the United States then so let's just I just watch window for a moment then we want to add and that's all we have to do if we want to filter the data so let's run the code and see exactly what's happening and I'm going to put a breakpoint here by clicking in the left margin and that means the code will pause here so we press F5 to run the code and you can see that the code has paused here so let's have a look at our collection so we drop the collection in and then we step past it and then you can see that the first name is Abbott now we run the code again until it's adding another item and you can see the next item is Miriam and so on until we finish so that's how we do it with a collection if you want to filter the data and you can see it's not much different than how we filter all the data from the worksheet so now let's look at using an array for the, exactly the same task so unlike the last time where we could just take all the, the data in basically one line of code we basically have to read through the code this time and the reason we have to do it is that we basically have to check the record now that's fine because we can do the same thing in the collection but you can see that we've had to add different lines of code here to deal with resizing the array so these lines of code just make it a bit more complicated so let's run through the code in the same way that we ran through the code with the collection and let's add our array here now we start off by saying row equals one and this is because we're, going, we're basically storing the next size of the array so we run the code and we stop when we find the first one because we've put the breakpoint in the if statement so we do a read dim to resize so the preserve means it keeps existing data if there's any so this is going to create array one to one and if we look you can see we've got an array with one item now we put the value in that new position and we've got Abbott now then we add row add one to row so that we know what the next size is now again we, we run the code until we come in again now we resize you can see that the array is now one two with the, the two as the blank space we add the new value there and we have Miriam and and continue with this so on until we have the array full so you can see when we want to use the array for this it's actually a bit messy because we need to keep resizing and when we want to use the collection we don't have to worry about resizing we just add the item and the collection takes care of it for us so you can see that the collection is much better in this scenario so on to the third major difference between the collection and between the array so the third major difference comes where we have to insert items so it's very easy to insert items in a collection but not so easy with an array so let's look at a collection first so if we want to insert items here we basically use before or after so let's just step through this code we add apple so we've just added apple so that'll just add it in the last position then we come along and we say we want to insert orange before apple that goes in position one we want to insert pear before position one so pear go, now goes to position one and then we're saying we want to insert banana after position one so banana goes in position two so you can see that it's very very easy to insert items into a collection now let's look at doing the same thing with an array so here is our array code now we don't know the size in advance of our array we don't know how many things we're going to be inserting and when this is the case we basically have to resize each time we want to add a new item now if we knew in advance it's going to be 10 then it's not a problem but if we don't know then it gets more complicated so we set our array to be one we add the apple so it looks pretty much like the collection did when we started the previous one so you can see we have apple now when we want to insert orange in position one we have to use this function that i wrote so let's just close this watch window for a moment we so we do insert and what the insert has to do basically it has to increase the size of the array 
So it increases the size of the array by one. Now we look at our array. You can see we have a blank space. Our array is now size two. And we then basically have to copy all the data from the current position we're inserting to the end of the array. We're moving everything on by one, basically. And we do it with our for loop. And then we set the value at the position we want to set it. And then we just return. So you can see when we use the collection, all this has been done for us. But when we're doing it with an array, it's much more complicated because we have to do the work ourselves. So let's look at it one more time. So we have two items, orange and apple, and we want to insert pear in position one. We first of all have to resize our array. So it's the current size plus one. And you can see that we've done this. And then we basically read through. So we push all the items down one. We copy apple to the last position. We copy orange to the second position. And then when we finish doing that, we basically place the item in the position that we want like this. And then we return and so on. So you can see in this case that collection is clearly better for inserting items. Now, of course, you can write the code yourself to do it, but as the collection already does it for you, it means that the collection is clearly better when it comes to inserting items. So in the fourth and final difference between arrays and collections, we're going to look at updating items. Now in a collection, we add an apple here, and then we want to update the value in position one, and we want to set it to a pair. So what happens? Well, what happens is we basically get an error object required because we cannot update values in a collection. We can, we can, they're only read only. If we want to update a value, we have to remove it and add a new value. So you can see this is a major drawback. Now there's one case that we can get away with this, and that's if there is, we're adding a class object. So if we add a class object, we can actually change the content of the class object in the collection. But for basic data types like strings, longs, dates, etc., we cannot update them. So as you can imagine, this is a pretty serious drawback in a lot of situations. Now let's look at the array. So here is the array, and you can see with the array that actually it's no problem to update values. So let's step through the code, and let's have a look at our watch window. And let's drop the array in here. And you can see that we don't have anything in it at the moment. And now after this, we've got Apple. So now we're going to attempt to actually replace Apple with pear. And you can see we can do that without any problems at all. So that's the, in this round, we could say that the array wins because we can't update items with the collection, but we can in, with the array. And that can have a drawback for our collections in a lot of situations. Okay, so we're going to just recap on everything that we've done. And so let's have a look at arrays first, and then we look at collections. So arrays, basically, if you're reading all data from a range, it's very easy to do so in an array. It takes very little code, and it's very fast. If you want to update a single value, like a basic data type, then this is possible in an array. So you can replace any value with another value, and it's quite simple to do. The problem with the array is that you need to know the size in advance. Now this is outside of reading the data from the range. In any other case, you need to know the size in advance. And if you don't know the size in advance, then you have to resize all the time. And this takes extra code, which is a bit messy. Now the other problem with the array is that it's not easy to insert or remove an item. And this is because if you insert or remove, you basically have to resize and then you have to copy all the values down. Now, the collection, on the other hand, reading data from a range is slow because it requires a lot of code. You have to read through each item. And updating a single value is not possible. And this is the except with objects where you can update objects. Now, the, the, the advantages of the collection are you never have to worry about setting the size. You just add an item. It can be inserted somewhere or you remove an item and you don't have to worry about the size. VBA takes care of that for you. And as I said, it's easy to insert or remove an item and even just inserting in position one, in position five, then VBA will take care of doing that in the collection for you. Whereas with an array, it's very messy and you have to do it all yourself. So these are the main differences between the collection and the array. Now, I hope you enjoyed this video today on the differences between arrays and collections in Excel VBA. 
and make sure to click on the subscribe button to subscribe so that you'll get notified about more of my videos and don't forget as well to check out the rest of the videos in this playlist on collections.